Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for our first hot topic. And this is Binance reacts as Nigeria battles rising exchange rates. Now, um, joining us to have a conversation is Dominic Karume. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Best morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. All right. So Binance reacts, you know, as I mean, we already know what's happening in the country. Um, every day, the dollar keeps, you know, skyrocketing. It's ridiculous. Like every single day. In fact, I was having a conversation with the Go the other day, and we're talking about how a week um, there was a, a 130 naira increase to the dollar, and then before the end of that day, just in one day, there was even more increase of almost 100 naira as well. Um, so let's talk about the, the, the issue that we have in Nigeria currently, which is the whole um, exchange rates being not stable. Um, and it's not even stable with the fact that, you know, sometimes it goes down and then it comes up. It is not stable because it's going up every single minute. You can, you know, look at it right now. And then in the next one hour, it's a different price and it has gone up again. So what is your take on what we're facing right now as a country with um, this whole dollar situation? And then we talk about uh, what Binance is trying to do with Nigeria. It's interesting to even start by making this joke that my friends told me last night. Last night, I was talking with a friend of mine, Nigel. Um, he's in Canada. And he was making a joke about Nigeria because he normally does to he exchanges cryptocurrencies to be able to do one or two things for with naira and he was just making a joke that the nigerian naira is so volatile and it fluctuates as if um you are on the seashore the way the waves are and you see we understand that actually nigeria is facing a complex economic situation with things like foreign um, low foreign direct investment with things like high inflation a weak currency well but a lot of people are blaming binance which is a peer-to-peer -peer platform that just allows users to trade digital assets without intermediaries they are blaming binance for worsening the near value however i think i want to categorically say that this is a misguided and uninformed view because binance peer-to-peer -peer is not the cause of nigeria's problems but it's rather a solution that offers Nigerian access to a global decentralized market for cryptocurrencies. Banning, I think we, we also had a history where banning, especially when it comes to cryptocurrency, has been occurring in February. In 2000, first and foremost, let's start with the history. When cryptocurrencies was banned in China, it moved to Estonia. When it, um, some forms of mining were banned with cryptocurrencies and modern technologies in the US, they decided to start using um, renewable energy to be able to do this cryptocurrency. So banning has not always been the best to be able to approach a modern technology like this. Um, coming to the table to be able to see that you are able to negotiate things out is a way out binance did not cause her, her problem because first and foremost we understand that binance of course yes binance um so is not before we get to on if binance is the problem system. right um i just want a little bit of explanation on what's going on with our economy so for instance why is the why is there um always a rise on the dollar could this be because of Binance? For instance, now, um, if you check Binance, you'd see different prices. You can go there and someone is deciding to sell for a certain amount. Another person decides it's deciding to sell for another amount. So there is this um, free, um, there's no regulation on it because you can decide to sell for whatever price you want, especially if you're going to be selling in bulk. So that's what I'm trying to get a hang of before we even go to, you know, banning it and all of that. So, the effect of Binance on our economy and ensuring that that rate fluctuates over time is not, is not a function of, uh, it's not a problem that Binance has caused. I mean, you have things like low foreign direct investment. You have things like a weak currency, right? You also have, okay, of course, if somebody in the parallel market, I can decide that the CBN is, uh, is trading for, maybe 805 per 
dollar and i want to sell my own at 8010 if i see somebody that truly wants to be able to buy that from me at 8010 then i sell it does not mean it should it does not mean that the whole country where you are looking for naira or where you are looking for dollar everywhere it should not take on the rates that a a, a company that is not registered under the security exchange commission will not be determining will not determine the rate at which naira to dollar is trading i mean i understand that binance has over 170 million users worldwide which of course this user has generated more revenue than nigeria's entire budget but it does not it operates outside the jurisdiction of the security exchange commission which means it it should not be able to affect our own national economic currency just as it is it is users that are trading with their own choice on binance that puts the rates as what they want to put it in it does not mean that that should not say okay the uh, entire country we have changed rates to something so binance has not really affected it it is because of some of the inefficiencies that we have in our system that has actually affected and caused that particular problem to keep going on when you said that Binance is really going to help the country, what did you really mean? I mean, Binance, okay, for example, um, for the first time, the Nigeria, when the, when, the, when the currency was banned, when this ban happened in 2021, Binance took the digital form of the Naira and, and, and put it on their platform. It made the Naira to also be able to have like a global exposure and a lot of people too from the African continent were able to access the Naira, which also made the Naira to be really, really used. I mean, for starters, in um, Brary's time, I think they printed about $15 trillion. Sorry, over $15 trillion Naira. I think there was one of the administration too that also printed about $21 trillion Naira, which means that there is actually excess Naira in the economy. So something that you do not even have a regulated supply to, it's there no, there's a possibility that the supply of that thing will become so much and it will fall in value the way it is falling. Binance also helps to be able to expose Nigerians to um, the global financial markets. And it sees that Nigerians, they are able, it educates Nigerians about the benefits and the risk of digital assets. It helps them to be able to create wealth, achieve more financial inclusion, and they're able to participate in more in a better global digital economy. So it is something that is, um, it seems like a joke that a, the giant of Africa will be blaming a private entity for just affecting her currency. Okay, well, so the crux of the matter is Binance has reacted as Nigeria battles rising exchange rates. What's their reaction like? Do you have that idea? Yes, this morning I was on the Binance official page and they said we should ignore this fraud. And truly, Binance, is, they have a, an exchange, a marketplace, which is a pay-to-pay -pay marketplace that um, is a platform where traders or users come to be able to exchange um, currencies or value between each other. It does not mean that when a user on that particular platform wants to demand something maybe higher, right, then they are now the ones that are affecting the economy of that country. It is a digital uh, marketplace and people are able to have the choice to be able to place um the amount of what they want to play is there Binance categorically stated that it is a fraud that they are the ones that is responsible for it if binance was supposed to you know and fraud means, okay. fraud means fear uncertainty and doubt fud fear uncertainty and doubt fear uncertainty yeah. and doubt okay um so if binance was even supposed to help you know put some regulations in especially because you know it's a marketplace that anyone can decide whatever they want to sell their dollar you know whatever rates they like um so if binance was supposed to help with maybe a regulation or two what do you think they could do to at least help the nation because the the fx rate is really really unstable at this point binance agreements what would they be able to do to help our country <laughs> At the moment, I think what Binance, Binance cannot really do anything to help our country. What can be done is for us to find 
ways in um to be able to get a uh, fiscal monetary policy uh, fiscal policy policies i know that the cbn governor Cardiso is doing a lot of things to be able to revive and explore a lot of alternatives and this actually is also a media propaganda to us try to see that these alternatives that they are exploring is can checkmate um the fluctuating rate of the naira to dollar um this might not have been the best approach because a, a banning does not really work banning most times promotes the activity and also onboards more citizens especially when it is coming from a technological perspective that you cannot be stopped i say you know, in, 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 in secondary school they used to say power is the ability to do work in, with technology we say technology is powerful because it changes the rules and as you can see blockchain is a technology cryptocurrency is a technology and it is competing with the traditional financial system so um at the moment we can do the best to be able to better our economy but Binance operates in other countries it does not operate in nigeria alone why is it not changing the the way their own currency is fluctuating so we should take a a page from what other countries are doing right and their own currency is not fluctuating even with the presence of Binance in their country okay. so since Binance cannot do anything to help you know our currency right now what can the government you know do to ensure that you know at least our own monetary policy is stronger and then the free fall of the naira um doesn't pose as a problem you know at least it can start even even if we cannot get back to one dollar uh, one naira to one dollar <laughs> but at least you know we can we can still have some form of sukkah we are already doing very well with the agricultural sector by moving from the consuming economy to a production economy we're also doing well we're trying to see that we save much are we, more before are we directly. really doing well with the agricultural sector <laughs> That that is maybe a, has a, that is a, because maybe, maybe he has you are, fifty hectares of farm. If somewhere. you have some information, please <laughs> please share with us. If you have any information, because as of right now there is a you know shortage of food supply. The gov the president had given thirty billion naira to state governors, but there is still a shortage of food supply. They want to share. And when you go to the market, you know the rice. prices are ridiculous. People can barely feed. So if you have some information about that, you saying that you know we we're doing so well in the agricultural sector. If you have any information, please share. Indulge me. <laughs> you know the fact that thirty billion was actually injected into the agricultural sector is to be able to cushion the effect of the food insecurity that is rising globally. You know, statistics have it that India, agriculture employs about 60% of their population. Here in Nigeria, it employs about 40% of the population. So 30 billion being injected into that sector, we might see that it increases that percentage to about maybe 50%, which we also see that what we produce is also increasing. And of course, yes, the, um, in Nigeria right now, the reason why a lot of things are going up, we understand that there's a high, there's, astronomical level of inflation going yeah. <laughs> on in Nigeria because you see the major drivers of the economy which is fuel that makes people to be able to move from one place to another goods to move from one place to another has also gone up but you also look at it too the purchasing power of the people has also come down because of the dollar that is has also gone up too just like as we are, we've been talking about so um when goods move transportation will also move which will also affect the price at which these um merchants will sell it to the end users or the consumer so it's a ripple effect of what is happening however the fact that uh, they are looking out for a way out of this situation is something that we should believe in and trust in the process because um you even seeing the fact that that particular money is going into the agricultural sector, we see that, okay, well, possibly maybe we can start exporting things from the agricultural side to earn much more money. We have also stopped um, the, we have also tried to stop a lot of dollar from going out through the first subsidy and all of those things. Let's also hope that we continue to save a lot of money that we can inject into infrastructures that can cushion the effect. Things are actually on the high side right now in Nigeria. I also pray to that um, we look into strategies that would push in this effect. See that much more infrastructures 
and ways to be able to help the common man to reduce the high level of hardship is also enacted. But when when a country, no matter how <clears throat> how much we say they are behind, are afraid of a particular thing, maybe there are there are some reasons. Walk us through the security challenges when you're dealing with Binance and other blockchain uh, or cryptocurrency or all these things. Because if the government is afraid, there must be something they are afraid of. Tell us what the security challenges are with this and how we can surmount them. This got, come again, the security challenges with cryptocurrency. Using cryptocurrency, Binance and every other thing. Because that's oh, one of the concerns of the of, of the federal okay. government. Yes. People, one of the major one of the major um, concerns is the fact that taxation. You know, every government wants to be able to have tax um, paid back to them because that's one of the ways they generate money. I understand too that in this Tinubu regime, they've also implemented ten percent tax on the crypto. When the national blockchain policy has also was also enacted in May twenty twenty two. And I also understand that after that time, when Tinubu came in, he also said that the cryptocurrency community should be paying 10% tax, especially when you are registered at the Exchange Commission. So, one of the major, uh, you see a lot of money truly moves in the in the digital finance space. You see 10 billion, a lot of billions are moved. And just imagine if the government is actually making some 10% tax from it, it will be able to build more infrastructures for its citizens and also maybe use that to be competitive in the global financial market. So that is one of the major concerns that have also been there, especially with government and cryptocurrencies. They are also concerned too that there is a high level of cyber security that might act cyber security activities and anti-monetary laundry activities that might be going on with this particular technology that allows for the movement of value to be frictionless. You know, I say something, as a certified blockchain architect and someone, a certified metaverse expert, someone that also plays in the artificial intelligence field as an author now, artificial intelligence made the cr creation of value to be frictionless. Blockchain as a technology made the transfer of value to also be frictionless. And what is that value? The value is in monetary terms, USDT, Bitcoins, and all of those things. So that has seen that ideally in the um, when money passes through the traditional financial system, there's a money the banks they also remit to the CBN, which also goes back to the government. But this is not the situation when it comes to cryptocurrency. So these are some of the major concerns that have made it to always have a problem with it. However, it is important to a state that in February 2021, there was a ban that happened in Nigeria as related to cryptocurrencies. It only saw that cryptocurrencies tried the pay to pay market grew bigger and Naira was infused in for the first time as a very liquid asset on Binance platform after that. Now in February 2024, two years after, we are facing the same challenge again. Since that February is a month, <laughs> <laughs> okay uh well but binance is a very important thing cryptocurrency very very important because it connects us with the global market and all that but how accessible is uh, this market to the common man a, a lot of people when you hear crypto is like you have to be a computer genius mm -hmm. you have to know how to uh, manipulate a lot of things before you can trade in that space is it exclusively for some set of people with a, a certain set of skills or how accessible is it for the common man so that everybody can embrace it? In the world of the wise man, you need something in your head to go ahead. And if you look at this, the write-up on my shirt, you see you need education to establish an economy. This is a new technology that involves digital finance so knowledge about digital finance is important and is necessary but today anyone watching this show right now whatever you know or whatever you are doing you took out some time one hour three five ten hours to study it and get better at it and that's why the entry level into cryptocurrency as a user is not so difficult it's not difficult at all it's basically for you to 
know the infrastructure to download and the next step of action to take. And at our academy at VRM, we teach people how to navigate this um, space of cryptocurrency through some of our courses. So if you can quickly do that, go online, I will be able to do that particular training with you guys. However, it is not so difficult. It's a one step, one step, two step, three process, and you are done. So this um, this crashing of the Naira is not affecting anything crypto, anything in yeah, the blockchain and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's safe because people want to st store their wealth or their assets in dollars now and all that. So you know, is this also a safe? You know that, funny enough, it has been very interesting for the crypto space. Bitcoin has been going up, right? And um, a lot of people. In some of the sh shows that have been on national TV, when dollar was still at, when now was still at seven hundred, I think there was a time seven hundred and sixty. Mm -hmm. I was on one of the shows and I was calling this. A lot of my followers they hedge their funds they, by dollarizing their economy. They hedge their funds against the dollar, and today a lot of them have so much profit. So, um, it is just sad that we're at this particular point in time but uh, engaging in cryptocurrencies is also something that you must it is inevitable because the future is digital however you must exercise caution when engaging with some of these exchanges too and possibly do explore alternatives like maybe consider using a local registered crypto exchange if you are not sure about the legality of places like Binance. So is this is this one way you tell people to save their money? Because I mean, you just talked about how um, some years ago, when or rather last year, so when um, dollar was still about seven hundred naira. So is this how you would tell people to probably save their money? You know, even considering the fact that people are hoarding these dollars, and then the rate is just skyrocketing as well. This is not a financial advice. Mm -hmm. However you with the level of financial literacy that i have um it will be good when you have a weaker currency to save your money against that weaker currency in a stronger currency and that stronger currency truly would have been the dollar when you, we saw the macroeconomics of what is going to happen in the nigerian economy we advise that you can hedge your wealth in digital currencies because we saw that bitcoin was also going to go up because of the market cycle the market cycle for bitcoin right now is that we're at the halving we're still going to go up from the halving and peak so we'll still we'll still have a hundred thousand dollars bitcoin 200 300 thousand dollars bitcoin we're not there yet we're not even at sixty nine thousand dollars yet we will feel where the reset happened from so if you understand the market of the cycle that the cryptocurrency market has just four cycles reset the the crack sorry the crash the reset the halving and the peak and this happens in four years every four years the crash the reset the halving we are currently at the halving then the peak and then we'll crash again so once you understand this cycle basically all you need to do is act as a smart money investor as a smart money investor, you enter into the market during the reset so that you make the profits from the reset to the halving, from the halving again to the crash, and then you do what you sell off. If you now have an extra extra information like what we had, that the uh, because of the macroeconomics outlook that we're looking at, the Nigerian economy might possibly turn like turn out to be like this, that dollar will possibly hit this level it is hitting now. Then you now say, oh, Thank you, Jesus. And take all your local currency, save it against a stronger currency so that you would have actually applied the theoretical knowledge of the financial literacy that you have received so that you can see the practical manifestation in your world growing. And this has actually made a lot of my followers okay. to grow their world over time. Okay, so now, because you've told me about the four stages, so what happens when it crashes? Does it mean that your money is gone? <laughs> Like, I'm, because I mean, that's that's we we know about you know all of these cryptocurrencies. For instance, um, um, you put your money in, and you hear that okay, even after you mine the money for a while, 
some people actually lose money so is it possible to win to lose both ways naira is depreciating and then you put your money in this cryptocurrency and all of a sudden it crashes as well if it could it depends on the cryptocurrency that you put your money in. You can't lose both ways, especially when you're trading cryptocurrency that everyone knows about, especially cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So you can't lose both ways. What the difference between trading the crypto market and the forex market is that with the crypto market, you still have access to your tokens. Even though the value of the token be reduced, you still have access to your token. Like currently, one Bitcoin is what say about fifty one thousand dollars right um if it is if the value reduces to fifteen thousand dollars it will be yes it's the value is worthless but you will still have that one bitcoin whenever the value starts rising again right you would be, it's just like a land maybe when there is a downtime in property market yeah. the house is valueless when there is a better property market time the or the market is booming the house is valued right. more so um holding if there's a cash just like you asked will you lose all of your money no you might not you won't lose all of your money if you are invested into the right set of crypto assets you will lose all of your money all you just need to do is to be patient for the next cycle of the reset and the next cycle of the halving by the next cycle of the halving that crash that you have experienced you would have Averaged out, and then by the peak, you can sell because that's when your market is booming. So, patience will be the tool and the strategy that you employ during that period. However, you would lose both ways if you do not, if you are not invested into the right set of cryptocurrencies, right? And maybe you just buy whatever one of your uncle, whatever one of your person, your friend, or your family member just tell you without doing your proper research and that's why learning or investing with um, companies and entities like the Vorem LLC becomes a must for you to be able to be successful while navigating the cryptocurrency space take two last questions before we go first of all if you were to advise the government on cryptocurrency, Binance, whatever we're talking about this morning, what will it be? The first advice would be to get a better table where we're able to have better policies and negotiation. I mean, for starters, the entry level for startup for what they put out is so high i mean where do startups where will startups that want to truly be registered with security exchange commission get 500 million as bond to be able to have and they now pay 30 million as um, i think you now pay 100,000 naira registration fee and 300,000 naira please before that start before that startup will get all of that money i'm sure that they would almost be discouraged so a, um a better adjustments into the regulatory framework that will allow startups and companies to try because in every economy you they thrive through the small and medium scale enterprise like this binance we're talking about now is a very big company there are a lot of small and medium scale enterprises in nigeria that are exchanging cryptocurrencies as well but they cannot get registered with security exchange commission because of the bottleneck that is involved in, in it um I was speaking with the president of my association as an executive of the stakeholders of blockchain association here in Nigeria, CBAN. We have actually liaised before with NITIDA and um, also tried to see that we can push some of this framework for the digital policies to be favorable for everyone. Another thing too is the investment into technologies and infrastructure. Now, the, when I say investment into technologies and infrastructure, Education also comes into play. Okay, for Vorem, like what we do at Vorem, we elevate people's financial playing field and connect them to global commerce. We use our money, our hardened fund as a private entity to be able to create educational contents to educate people because we understand that they need, we, people need education to build what to establish an economy. So that effort too that's coming from the private sector should also come with high level of um, 
intensity from the government. If possible, the government should start collaborating with private institutions and sectors like us to, to be able to see that we can push this thing and push it fast. Another thing too, so a friend of mine three days ago was telling me from the US, the, my engineer friend, he said, Uma, is it so easy to buy Bitcoin in Nigeria? I said, no, it's no, sir, it's not so easy to buy Bitcoin in Nigeria. So, so, oh, yeah, yeah, in the US, it's so easy to buy Bitcoin in Nigeria, yeah, in the US. Why is that so? Because infrastructure is available. Right now in Nigeria, I don't think there are Bitcoin, the, the Bitcoin, you, there are no functional Bitcoin ATM machines. Mm. I did a study of the profitability of Bitcoin ATM machines because in one of my courses, I teach um, blockchain infrastructure, right? As a way to be able to make profit. Now, if the average cost of a Bitcoin ATM machine is about $8,000. When you say $8,000, times let's say you want to be able in let's say in major cities like lagos abuja and um lagos abuja portacos okay. you say you want to put a hundred atms in those cities maybe 30 30 33 33 atms each in these cities right to be able to dispense bitcoins or something all around the country at a hundred bit times eight thousand dollars that means you would have spent maybe eight hundred thousand naira eight hundred thousand dollars rather to be able to make that investment but i tell you something if you know just as you have transaction fees when you withdraw from the bank or withdraw from the atm that's how you have transaction fees when you are using bitcoin infrastructure too you the but this transaction fees is called satoshi so you earn an average of maybe about 0.000 theory satoshi per withdrawal fee now let's say in nigeria you have a population of over 200 million people in nigeria if you just have maybe 100 not 1 million no not 10 million no 100 000 people using the high bitcoin atm machine across the court times 100 000. that means you'll be making 30 bitcoins on a daily basis investors investors suppose are still sure the Nigerian government has money to be able to. I, I mean, and I know I have eight hundred thousand dollars now. Or let's let's say we are looking at getting funding as a company to be able to invest into that type of infrastructure as a private company. But then there are people that have this money and they can invest into this infrastructure to see that um, there is much more um, integration of the technology into the society and profit making too. So, so I mean, if we so don't start, we won't know how to exploit. Okay. So from what I can um, hear from you right now is you would advise the government to actually work with bit like Binance or all of these cryptocurrencies than to even decide to um, ban them or, you know, just block whatever they're doing. It's yes. It. So it's better for them to actually put funds in, work with them, and that way, you know, we can actually create some revenue or revenue stream. Yeah. You know, imagine the Nigerian government as an organization, right? Yeah. When an organization is stuck or confused about something, they invest into research and development. Right. To be able to find out new ways to navigate that complex system. Because their competitor would come out and beat them at it because their competitor would have learned that better than them. Mm -hmm. U.S., even with the level of ban and restriction they have with cryptocurrency, U.S. owns the highest amount of cryptocurrency in the world, over 200,000. China comes second with about, I think, 156,000 bitcoins. MicroStrategy, a company in the U.S., owns over 194,000 bitcoins. So combining what is in the U.S. alone is much more than what is in any other country. And U.S. is still one of the most treated company, and eh, sorry, countries, countries about the world about cryptocurrencies so what are we saying here we must apply wisdom caution research and explore alternatives to make the system work use for your, us use your head as we say shine your wisdom eyes wisdom is yeah. profitable to direct okay so let me ask you this personally this is not um cryptocurrency or not they they move by the federal government this is about the last question the move by the federal government to go after the BDCs, the people who exchange money, uh, do you really see that as a solution to the crashing of the or the uh, appreciation of the Naira uh, in the nearest future? 
Well, yes, it will because you know a house that's divided against itself will not stand. Mm. And can two work together except they agree according to the Bible, God forbid. So when you are trying to make something work on this side, and then you have distractors on the other side, it becomes um a difficult process. So thank God that moves have been made to be able to go after them so that first of all they get scared and they start ensuring that the illicit activities to make that particular exchange rate so um, over bogus is reduced. And we have less people that are trying to do that particular thing. I think it will actually help the Naira to regain its strength. But who, who gives these people the money to exchange? Is it not the banks? You go to the banks that you are supposed to get at the official rates. You don't find this money. You go to ordinary people. You get it. Just like we were saying here. Mm -hmm. You go to parties. You see mint. Uh, money that has just come from the mint. And it's fresh. You but you don't you find don't it. You go to the bank. Sometimes they tell you there's no cash. You don't find it. You, f you go to the ATMs and withdraw money that is torn. And you're asking right. yourself, bank? And this is the kind of money that is coming out and all that. But you go to, uh, you don't even find money in some ATMs, but you find POS very close to ATMs. We were just talking about that this morning. So do you think the saboteurs are really the people who are on the streets or the people who are supplying them? In this yeah. case, which will be the banks or the politicians who have this money, raw in cash, their in their houses. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to any aboki, I uh, will say, oh, madam, uh, this is what well, I they have. have they call, call someone yeah. who will now transfer the money to you. So it is not even these people who are doing the business. So who do we, are we not just chasing shadows instead of going to the root of the Pretty cost, much. of the matter, rather? We are not chasing shadows. We are, uh, we've done the most we can to address the root cause of the matter, you know, just like this conversation we're having. This conversation we're having is to be able to see that we set things right where they have gone wrong. And we also prefer solutions to speak to the pain point and the benefits of the people. However, you know, in the world of the wise man, change must begin with ourselves. We must start the change internally. And I think because of the economical situation, a lot of people just want to earn some extra money, some extra money. Um, I was watching, I saw a movie, a, a, a short clip of a movie in, in um, one of the TV series, he said, if I sell my soul, I can't see, I sell, what else does a man have if he has sold his soul for money? Does he sell, sell his soul and his integrity for money? And I think everybody needs to start asking themselves that critical question. Now, what else would I have if I have sold my soul and my integrity for money? Because of money, a lot of people just try to cut corners and it's affecting us as a whole population, and something that we must try our best to stop selling our souls and our integrity for money. Mm -hmm. All okay. right. That's, That's a good way to <laughs> land it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rume, for being a part of our program this morning. Thank it's always a pleasure having you. I'm grateful. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice Thanks. day. Okay, uh, Dominic Rume Uririe is a certified blockchain architect and metaverse expert. He was joining us to talk about the fact that uh, uh, Nigeria is considering blocking crypto exchanges to stabilize the Naira and also uh, Binance reaction as Nigeria battles rising exchange rates. Okay, well, I'm interested in one thing we skipped on the newspapers. Mm -hmm. uh, federal government is yet to give out the palliatives. The <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're laughing. It's not funny. <laughs> federal government yet to release free grains to Nigerians. Mm. You know, this thing about promising and then failing. Promising and then failing all the time. It is what has brought us to this level. Yes. I am very sure of that. Because if I trust someone and they tell me that this suffering is going to endure for like a year but after that you will enjoy at least i know how to plan i will find There's ways mental, to survive yes. yes i'm just telling myself after this year i'm going mm -hmm. to so it will give me strength it's mm -hmm. like you 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 are in prison or you are in somewhere that you're finding it very difficult you are sick even and you're thinking about your children you're thinking about your family and uh, if i leave them who will take care of them and all that and I just want to be well and take care of them again. And it gives you that strength to keep going on. Yeah. But each and every time a promise is made, 
It's never been. It's never fulfilled. Received, never. So what do we do now? How does government even begin to gain the trust of the people? If you ask me. No, I go ask. No, I go ask. Because there is definitely a trust deficit in Nigeria. Yes. Government, this um, politicians, when it's time for them to campaign, you see them. They come out and mass tell me, I would do this, I would do that, I would do that. And then when it's time to actually do the work, you don't see them anymore. You're talking about palliatives. Sometimes they keep it for themselves. They tell mm -hmm. you they want to, you know, share it when During it's their, their birthday, birthday party. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, even if they have to share it, they only share it to like a few people of which those people will still keep their own courts mm -hmm. and now and before it gets to the masses it's really literally next to nothing so I, I i really don't know how the government can start to build that trust i think maybe a good way to start is ensuring that they don't even say anything at all it's better not to say anything than for you to say something and you do not fulfill the promise mm -hmm. so if, if, if they want to start don't say anything just start to act and do and work and people are like oh wow the government did this oh wow the government oh okay we're getting better and then when when you talk make sure you do what you say it should be talk and do not you know i'll just talk and then my words are so empty because when your words are empty nobody can trust you anymore when you talk like mm, you're making noise again oh well i was there when the military was here and a lot of the things they said they did uh, and they didn't need to go to the National Assembly. They just said, we will do this. This one will stop being happening. And that was how it's it was decree. happening. They just decree and it just goes on. I'm not saying military should come back, but mm -hmm. I'm saying that if you have to have a democracy, democracy should be democracy. Yeah. It should be something that we trust because it is our government. The people in government are the people that we put in government. So they're working for us. Like our friend, uh, architect Nyaito would always say, the office of the citizen has to have that feel. Yeah. Not just that we need to rise up. We don't have to rise up. We rose up and put you in office mm -hmm. for you to represent us. So let us sit down and see that what you're doing is what we sent you there to do. Yeah. Tell us the truth. If it is bad, tell us. If it is good, tell us. One person in the presidency came out to say, oh, one politician, let me not say in the presidency, came out to say that, Nigeria is not as uh, wealthy as uh, uh, we make it to be. Nigeria is a very poor country. Yet you all we are so very rich. We have some of the <laughs> highest natural resources in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You're saying we're a poor country? We're not a poor country because we don't have the resources. We're a poor country because we don't have the right leadership. leadership. We have a poor leadership. Mm -hmm. And that's what is our problem in Nigeria. Yeah. Dubai shouldn't be more than us. We have the same oil they have, mm -hmm. but they monitor their oil. We don't want to do that. And then they have a vision. I don't think Nigeria has uh, have a What's the Nigerian dream? What, like, there's no vision. There's nothing like, oh, in 2020, um, in 2030, this is where we want to be. This is the type of infrastructure we want to have. This is what we want to do in healthcare. This is what we want to do in education. There is, we don't have a vision. And that is the problem. And then even with our government, there's no continuation. There is not, there's no continuity, rather. There's nothing like, oh, okay, you know what? We're, Everybody we're wants, part to, of this party. wants to get the glor glory yes. and leave. We're part of this party. For instance, the APC has ruled for eight years. And now, at least an, an additional one year in a few months, right? So that's nine years. Before you know it's ten years. What has the APC done in the ten years that they've ruled? Even the APC is doing administration by administration. It's, because this administration is now blaming the last, the last administration, administration for doing Shouldn't wrong. there be continuity in each party and say, okay, this is our party's vision. This is what we want to do for Nigeria. And so when one is leaving, you're continuing what the other, your, your, predecessor, your predecessor has done. Not just that you're coming here and you, you look clueless. We don't know what's going on. It's... it's... Room, room. Mm. I should compose this up for you to calm you down <laughs> all the time. But that's where we are. But this is our Nigeria. We believe Nigeria is going to grow. Uh, there will be that time. But we just hope that it's going to be in our time. So yes, that we can live to witness that. it and say, okay, yes. Uh, this Nigeria, we thought it was impossible to get to it's this level here. we have. We have reached here. We hope be that amazing. it begins with this administration. But yeah. the bottom line is that you have to start by letting us believe in you and believe you when you say anything to us. That is when we can give all the support that you need to succeed as a government. Yeah. Well, we do hope that we are going to get there soon. 
Uh, but this is how yes, we're going to drop it this morning. Yes, this is it. It's always a pleasure being with you. My name is Nyamgul Agadi. Bye for now. My name is Rome Paulson. See you tomorrow. Have a good day.